Okay, here we go. Did people know about that? No, not many. Did you not want people to know? I did not. Why? I was embarrassed because he was married. That was really hard. I mean, I'll give her credit, man. That This girl's been through a lot, and she's up on the stand, and she's holding it pretty good together to admit that she was sleeping with a married guy and that she was embarrassed and she didn't want people to know. Uh, is this going to humanize her? Is this going to make people think that she's human? Or is it going to make them think that she's an evil woman who's breaking up a marriage? The defense or the, the prosecution makes it like she's unethical and she doesn't care about his wife or her kids. And that's why she did it. I mean, it, the way this defense or the, the DA went after her is just sickening to me. And as far as the sexual relationship, is that something you engaged in uh, sex with Mark Rivera on a, uh, a daily basis or an often, often time? It wasn't that often. How often did you say it? Maybe once a month. This, why the hell is this relevant, people? I, maybe somebody will put in the comments why they think this is relevant. I, to me, this has nothing to do with, did she believe she was at her house? And did she believe she was in fear? And was the shooting justified or not? Has nothing to do with whether or not she was sleeping with this guy. Absolutely outrageous in my book. Did y'all start uh, texting each other, sending each other sexually explicit photographs, that sort of thing? Yes, we did. Uh, did that become a, a routine habit between the two of us? Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, how long did that part of the relationship, the sexual relationship, last? A year at the most. Do you remember the exact time of the, when, when the sexual part of the relationship, the sexual relations ended? No, it had to be either late. 2017, early 2018. You don't remember it exactly? No, I do not. Okay, the DA really capitalizes on this because she makes it seem like it was a fair and it was over. But evidently, she was talking to him that night about meeting uh, and they, they would sex pictures of each other and talk about what they were going to do. And I mean, to me, it's adult shit, big deal. I mean, there's going to be somebody here that go, you're defending her, it wouldn't be different. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it's so hypocritical. The guy who was killed had weed in his house and was smoking weed. And nobody's allowed to bring that up because they don't want to make the victim look bad. And I don't think this guy deserved to be shot because he had weed. I don't care. I just like a level playing field. If you can trash her about the affair and call it credibility, then why can't you say he was smoking weed and he had weed and maybe that's why he jumped up. Maybe that's why he charged her. Maybe that's why he did such aggressive move to her to make her think that he was a threat because he didn't want her to find his weed. But you can't say that. It's unfair. And I don't like that. And that's my key with this. Uh, and why did uh, that part of the relationship come to an end? I knew it was morally wrong. I didn't want to hurt anybody. And I was knew it wasn't going to go anywhere. Okay, this question again is going to be evaluated. Did she really quit because it was morally wrong? At what point did you find it was morally wrong? After a year of doing it, when you started it, when you started it, did you know it was wrong? Did you know it was wrong a month, two months, three months? It took you a year to figure out it was wrong. So this really opens up a lot of questions that if you want to attack her on this issue, you could. So I think the more, the better answer is, you know what? I knew it wasn't going anywhere. I probably shouldn't have started it. I knew it was wrong when it did. I should have stopped it earlier, and I didn't. That would have been a better answer. In my book, I know somebody's going to be saying that you're just being mean or you're taking her side or whatever. I'm, again, I'm just telling you how these things play out to a jury or to people watching. So you got to be careful when you volunteer too much information. Her answer could have been a lot shorter. So she's making long answers that could be shorter. And later on, she makes a short answer where it should have been longer, where she says she meant to kill him. Uh, did you remain close to Mark Rivera? Yes, we did. Uh, did you continue uh, these sexual flirtations, texts, photographs? I did. Did you, uh, were you still working? Uh, and again, he's bringing this, someone may ask, why would her attorney bring this up? Well, let the other guy bring it up. If you bring it up this way, you kind of take away the surprise and the I got you factor. 
you let her hear it and you let the jury hear it so when they hear it again there's not the shock there's not this big you know it's not a big as issue as it would be if you tried to hide it and not bring it up so that's why he's bringing this up in the same relationship as partners yes sir on and off describe that how, how that worked how often you worked or how often you worked with the other officers um i would ride around with other officers um some of the guys justin mac and bruce on the crt team Now, where were you living uh, in early 2018? I was living up in Uptown Dallas off McKinney Avenue. Living uh, was with anyone or, or? Just by myself. Yeah. Uh, did you have any, any pets, anything like that? I did. I got my dog Ranger. He's a little Yorkie in 2018. What part of 2018? The beginning of 2018. Uh, when you're lease was about to be up did you make a decision about uh whether you want to stay in that place or go somewhere else i wanted to go somewhere else okay. tell the jury why i was a courtesy officer at the place in uptown and i decided i just got tired of responding to loud music calls and we would constantly have to patrol the area so i decided i didn't want to do that and just wanted some freedom tell them a little more what a courtesy officer is. courtesy officer Okay, so he objected that it wasn't relevant what a courtesy officer was. Her being a courtesy officer may give her credibility that she was kind of helping protect her community. She knew her apartment. A courtesy officer, a courtesy officer, which I don't agree with, is basically she gets a reduced rent rate if she will kind of keep an eye on the apartment, kind of like play security guard. But she's a cop and she's armed, so she holds more weight, but it's really not sanctioned by the department. So she gets to use her government authority and government position to get a discount on her rent. I don't like that. I think that's BS. I think that's how you get corruption. That's how you get, I talked when I worked at one department, cops would go in and if they wouldn't give us 50% off, they'd leave and wouldn't eat there and tell them don't call the cops if you can't give us 50%. It becomes mandated and it leads to abuse. I don't like that. I, I didn't like taking free stuff as a cop. I don't want to owe you. I don't like taking free stuff now because I feel like you owe me or you're going to say, oh, I gave you the I, hell. You know, even on this channel, I had some guy send me some money, got all pissed off about the sign because he sent me money. Somehow I owed him something. So I, I, I've just never been the type to like somebody to be able to hang that over my head. That's what a courtesy officer is. Is this good or bad? Well, it means she wanted to move away. That's why she moved. And that leads into she was only living at this new apartment for 57 days, I think, is the date on how long she had been living in this new apartment. C courtesy officer, um, we just respond to a loud music complaint that uh, a resident would put in, and we would there would be a lot of break-ins in the garages, so we would have to report those and do a report on them. Do you get a benefit from being a courtesy officer? Yes, they would give us a discount on our rent for doing that. So you decided that you would. Had he not got that in, the prosecution would have been like, you know, when you testified about being a courtesy officer, you acted like you were doing the community a favor. That's not really true. You were getting compensated and paid for that, weren't you? So that's why it was good that the attorney got this in, that she got compensated. You to go someplace else? Yes, I did. And where, where, where did you decide to go? To the South Side Flats. Why did you choose uh, the South Side Flats? It was close to work, didn't have to drive as far. Okay. Um, and when did you move in there? Um, it was mid-July of 2018. The, you, the apartment number you lived in was what? 1378. Okay. 1378, I'm assuming, because I think the apartment that she shot the guy was 14. So 13 is the third floor, 1200 is the second floor, 14 is the fourth floor. So that's where, when she got her apartment in there, that he wanted him to hear the 13. So she would associate three for 13. We've seen the floor plan for that. It's a, uh, uh, it's been put in that yes. one, one bedroom apartment. Yes, sir. And who did you live there with? Just my dog. Okay. The photographs we've seen of the evidence for your apartment, is that how it was always furnished? Yes, sir. Uh, 
after you moved in there, uh, did you encounter some problems with some 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 crime problems with the South Side Flats or the area around it? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is where again we're talking about. I'm talking about chumming the water and setting up. So later when this comes up, it makes sense. He's trying to get in that she knew it was a high crime area. There were homelessness and there were crime in the area. So what would be more reasonable when she opened her door and saw some minor apartment because of this vast knowledge of knowing the area in a high crime area, that makes her actions more reasonable. So that's where he's setting up here. Did you do any research on that? I did. I would look, um, whenever I would go to work, I would just look at the crime or what was happening in that area. And what types of things did you see in that area? There would be a lot of robberies and a lot of break-ins in that area. A lot of robberies and break-ins. That's a nice place to move. Why, why did you say you moved there because to be closer and you knew there was a lot of robberies and break-ins? I mean, that's to me, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it really helps the fact on why it makes her actions more reasonable if there's a lot of robberies and break-ins and homeless in the area. And just for the record, most all cops tend to look at the crime stats in the area they live. They want to know where the parolees are at and where the sex offenders are at and where the crime's at and where they're dumping the stolen vehicles. That's pretty common. So that isn't something unique. But it may not be common for the jury. A lot of people may not know that. Did you ever encounter people uh, on the property that gave you some concern at times? Yes, I did. There would be a lot of times when I was driving into work that there would be people or like homeless people passed out on the patio chairs in the pool area. Uh, any idea how they were able to gain access? They would jump the fence. It wasn't that high of a fence, so that's how they would get in. Oh, so now I know there's robberies and burglars in the area, and I know there's a lot of homeless because Dallas is a complete homeless sanctuary. I love liberals. Give everybody a hug and free stuff city. Uh, it makes it, and I, they've got a stat out this you, the crime rate in Dallas is 300. You're 300 times more likely to be a victim of a crime in Dallas than any other city in the United States. I didn't know the source, but when I heard on the radio, I went, holy crap. But anyway, so Dallas is a high crime sanctuary, liberal left-run city with diversity as our strength. And so now she's saying there's homeless, there's break-ins, there's robberies, and we have a fence but I know that people jump the fence. So is it really that unreasonable that you find somebody in your apartment that you wouldn't jump to the conclusion? Or would it be reasonable to think that, hey, there's a lot of break-in, there's a lot of robbery. Somebody's in my apartment, they're not supposed to be here. It's easy to jump the fence. There's a bunch of homeless here. Holy cow, this shooting must be justified. That's kind of where we're going here. We're building this ladder to get to the top. Okay. Uh, how about with your dog? Did you ever have to take him outside the property? I did. And when would you do that? I would do it every morning. I would wake up and when I got home from work and whenever I would get um, ready to go to bed. Okay. Did you have any safety concerns about that? I did. And what precautions did you have? I would carry a pocket knife with me if, when walking him. Are you freaking kidding me? When she said this, I'm like, you're in an area with high crime and high robbery and homeless and people jumping a fence and you're a female and not a big female walking a dog at night in a shit area and you only carried a freaking pocket knife and you're a cop? I mean, when I heard this, I was like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? I, w I ain't even been to her apartment and I wouldn't walk around her apartment without a gun. I mean, it's just crazy. But anyway, this is, this is where you kind of set yourself up that a good, a good prosecutor would have jumped on that and go, you know what? You said you were so scared and there was such high crime, yet you didn't feel the need to carry your gun when you went out, did you? You walked your dog with just a pocket knife, didn't you? Was it a small pocket knife? Was it a lock blade? Was it a switchblade? Was it something you cut rope? I mean, again, she just gave the prosecutor a place to go to discredit her and to make her story look inconsistent or wrong. And you don't want to do that. I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about your routine uh, when you were living at the Southside Flats, okay? Uh, what time would you usually go to bed? Around midnight. And what was your work schedule? What days would you usually work? 
I worked Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Okay. Uh, did you also work a part-time job? Yes, I did. And when was that? That was Sunday mornings, and it, would, it was at First Baptist Church, and I would, that would be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Did you do that every Sunday? Yes, sir. All right. So you're, uh, what would be your usual day off then? Just Saturday. Okay. You could have had Sunday off, but you chose to work that extra job. Yes, sir. Now, non-cops don't know this, but when you're on these special teams and you get this eight to four job, those are sought after jobs as cops. That means you don't have to work shift work. You're not working midnight. You don't have, you have good scheduled days off. It's very hard to get weekends off in police work. You usually have to work close to 20 years to be senior enough to pick your days off as weekends. So her being a relatively young officer to have weekends off and to work an eight to five job is what we call pretty cush duty. How did she get that duty with only three years on the road? Well, we don't know. We'll do another video on that maybe. Uh, the, uh, your duties as a CRT officer in that team, did you sometimes work overtime? Yes, we did. Anything? That wasn't unusual? No, sir. If she worked a lot of overtime, this would be the time to get her overtime records and to say, isn't it true in the month of May, you work 200 hours overtime in that month? I mean, that would have been a good impacting statement for the jury to show how much time she worked and put in in this job, extra duty, plus volunteering at the church on Sunday. They didn't say what she did on Sunday. I know a lot of places in Texas, they have what's called sheepdogs. And uh, Buck at the gun store, I, I, I think he's one of the sheepdogs for his church. And those are the guys that are armed when they go to church. And they go into church in the morning and they go to the masses and they're like armed people in case some idiot wants to come in there with a gun. So I don't know if that's what she was doing. They didn't really get in her duties on what she did on Sunday, but maybe that's what she was doing. They also didn't get in. Was she compensated or was a volunteer? He said it was a part-time job. So were they paying her to be there or was a volunteer? Again, if I was on the other side, if I was a prosecutor, I would want to be asking that and finding out that. Oh, sorry. We're at 17 minutes. Let me make another part. I think this is part three or four. We'll go to the next part.